And it starts with the first player from this team going one against the goalkeeper. Hopefully they score, but if not, if it goes off, they then stay on and the first two from the other team get a ball and attack two against one. Hello, my name's Ian Parks. I'm a youth coach developer and I also support coaches using futsal. This session today is gonna to be about finishing and the aim is to give the, the players as many opportunities to explore different ways of finishing and enjoy scoring goals. So we've arrived at our venue and we've got the full pitch, but often we only have a third. So I'm just gonna start by making it clear that we're working in this area of the pitch. We won't need this full area because they're only under nines. Um, if we've got 10 players turning up for training, for example, we'd have typically a 5v5 game going on. The recommended size for that is 40 by 30, which kind of takes us out to here. But because we're looking at finishing, we're going to make the pitch a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower to try and increase the chances of finishing. So we're probably looking at sort of 35 long by maybe 25 wide. We're actually going to split the pitch in half and then we're gonna just use half the pitch for the part practice. So this is the goal for the big 5v5 game. But when we come to the part, we'll bring the goal up to the halfway line and play in here. So if we've got our 10 players, goalkeeper and four outfield behind this one, the other end, goalkeeper and four outfield here. We'll have a set of balls in each of the goals ready for the players to start the practice. And it starts with the first player from this team going one against the goalkeeper. Hopefully they score, but if not, if it goes off, they then stay on and the first two from the other team get a ball and attack two against one. They can either go by themselves to score or they can pass the teammate to score. If the goalkeeper saves it, they can play to their own player and then they can carry on. But once the ball goes dead, either off or in the goal, it resets at this point and then the next player comes on and we repeat. You might think, how long do you do this practice for? Probably enough for each of these players to have two goes at going versus the keeper, which means as a pair, they'd get four goes attacking this way. At that point, you switch over so that the yellows then get the chance to start as the one v the keeper and the blues are then playing two v one. Depending on how the players enjoy it, you might do a couple of goes or you might get straight back to your whole game of five v five. So some might say, well, I haven't got two goalkeepers. If that's the case, at under nines, I'd be encouraging all the players to have a go and just rotate round because I think it's good for them. If you haven't got the perfect number of 10, maybe you've got nine turn up, I'd play exactly the same game, but one of these players would just have to go twice. If it's too easy for the players, instead of going one versus the goalkeeper, you could just get one of them to come out from the start and play one v one instead of one versus the keeper. And the same, instead of playing two versus one, at that point, you could ask another player to come out and play for two versus two so that it's matched up. If it's too difficult, then I think we still keep it as the one versus the goalkeeper. But when the two come out, it might be that instead of the one staying to defend, they just drop back and the two play against the keeper. They still get exposure to deciding whether to take it by themselves or pass to a mate for a quick finish. In terms of the coaching points for this session, I'd probably look at the before, the during, and the after. In terms of before, I'd just be asking the players to get in a position where they think they're gonna score a goal. And that sounds really simple, but helping the players understand that the closer they are to the goal, the more likely they are to score. At under nines, that's sometimes helpful. During, getting them to experiment with different types of finish. Can they use the laces, the side of their foot, maybe a toe poke, maybe a chip? Get them to explore and experiment but also the simple message of aim for the corners can sometimes be helpful. And then after, we'll be asking them to follow in for rebounds. If you're taking the shot, it might bounce off the goalkeeper, it might come off the defender, so follow up and try and get a rebound. And if you lose it, try and win it back straight away. 